Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we'll be going over specifically mods to make your mechanical keyboard sound or feel better, not necessarily look better. So if you're interested in making it look better, you can do things like adding a nice custom coil or things changing up the keycaps or whatever. But we're gonna talk specifically about changing the sound and the feel to make it good and thucky. So the order of these mods will be from easiest to hardest. We have been getting questions where someone will send us a sound video and be like, how do I get my keyboard to sound like this? And usually in the bottom, there's a description of the exact switches, mods, parts, things that they use. But in this video, we're going to go over, I believe five different things you can do to make your keyboard sound better. Let's get started right now. It'll be from easiest to hardest. So pick some and do it. The first one, which is super easy, anybody can do this one, is getting a desk mat. Why should you get a desk mat? Because sometimes depending on the material of your table, whether it be glass, wood, or some kind of metal, stainless steel even, it will echo some sounds off of it when you're typing and that can result in an unpleasant noise. So when you're looking for a sound test or listening to sound tests around the internet on YouTube, usually they will do a non-desk mat sound test and then they'll do a desk mat sound test and you can hear the differences between the two depending on the keyboard and depending on the sensitivity of your microphone or your ears within that space. So desk mats improve sound dampening and decrease that echo from the table. They cost about 20 to $30. So they're super affordable, really accessible. And you can always pick one that will match your setup. There's always group buys on really cool desk mats. You can even get desk mats that match your keycap sets really cool. For example, there's one going on right now for Modern Dolch 2 on Dixie Mech. It comes with accompanying desk mat that you can pick from. It's a group buy that we got ourselves into and are really excited about. However, some of those keycap sets can be a little bit pricey. So if you're just looking for the desk mat, you can do that too. Um, Dixie Mech is a great place to buy desk mats that even aren't in group buy. They're usually about $25. I'll link to a bunch of different places where you can buy desk mats or desk pads down below. Places like Kono and Novel Keys as well. So that was number one, a super easy mod, almost no effort on your part, just a little bit of cash money. Number two, also pretty easy, is changing up your keycaps. I know we've talked about keycap sets before, but more on the, like, these are some keycap sets that we bought and they were budget. And this way, we're talking about how keycaps can change the sound of your keyboard. So keycaps have a lot of different profiles when you're looking at them. So when you're hearing terms like, oh my gosh, um, when you're hearing terms like SA, XDA, DSA, CAT, OSA, Cherry, OEM, MT3, there's just a bunch. There's a ton of different profiles for your keycaps. And what profile means is like their overall design. Do they have a sculpt? Are they uniform? Do the rows differ? Are they high profile? Are they low profile? We have a very in-depth guide on different profiles of keycaps that I'll link down below. It has pictures and things. So if you want to learn more about that, look at that link. But the thing about keycaps is that, so the higher profile keycaps, meaning the taller keycaps like SA, are going to produce a higher pitch sound compared to lower profile keycaps such as DSA. And then of course the material matters as well. ABS usually tends to be bassier than PBT, but it also depends on the thickness of your keycap as well. Thicker usually means thockier. If you want thockier, you want thicker. If you want thick ABS, then the only way right now, I think is GMK. PBT is usually on the thicker side as well. And you can find great PBT budget keycap sets. One thing to look out for is you wanna make sure that they fit the layout of your keyboard and that they have the right size keys. 
You can always play around with different keycaps and see what you like. For example, I personally don't like uniform keycaps. I like either OEM or Cherry. I've yet to play around with SA, but they seem really high profile so far. Would love to try it out in the future. But anyways, if you're looking to change up your keycaps and change it based on the noise, check out our guide down below. Number three, also pretty low effort, doesn't involve too much on your part, is adding foam or noise dampening material inside of your keyboard under your PCB. Uh, we don't, we, we didn't order any fancy foam, we just used like packing foam from the hardware store, whatever we could find at the time. But a lot of people do recommend that you use higher quality materials such as neoprene or sorbothane. We'll link to those down below as well. But those are actually noise dampening materials and not just packing foam for moving our dishes when we move. Some people recommend using shelf liners that you can pick up from stores like Walmart or Target. As long as there's something inside there that's filling up the space and not allowing the sound to just bounce around and do whatever it wants in there, you're going to get a better sound from that. So this does involve a little bit of work. You're going to have to open up your keyboard, but on the bright side, you don't have to desolder anything. Usually keyboards are tray mounted. If you don't know what that means, uh, we have I'll link to a nice guide on mounting styles down below. It's not mine, but it's a great reference in case you're moving deeper into the hobby and want to learn so much more about mounting styles because there are a lot and they do make a difference. So usually this involves unscrewing a few screws in the back of the keyboard or you have to take off some keycaps, find some screws, unscrew that, lift it up, and you'll find the case just empty and put some foam inside there. Make sure that it's not too thick because you do want to be able to put your PCB back on top. You can even cut out different strips and mold it around your PCB or battery if you have a Bluetooth keyboard, but it's not bad. Sometimes your keyboard even comes with foam and you can open it up and put that foam inside. That will work as well. All right, two more. Number four, we got modding your stabilizers. This is sort of like the first entryway into really modding and customizing your keyboard, I would say. This involves clipping, lubing, or band-aid modding your stabilizers if you want to go that route. Personally, I don't like the way the band-aid mod makes these stabilizers sound. It almost really mushes it too much and makes it too low pitched for me, but you can always try it out. It's super easy to remove once you put it on. So don't worry about that being too permanent. Teha Types has a great guide on how to do this as well as Rama. I'll link those down below as well if you want to reference that. So modding stabilizers does depend on whether you have a hot swap keyboard or a soldered keyboard. If it's soldered, you won't be able to do things like clipping and band-aid modding because you do have to take your stabilizers out of the keyboard. If you have a hot swap keyboard and plate mounted stabilizers or PCB mounted, I suppose it doesn't really matter since you can take them apart. You can take off the switch and then unclip the plate mounted stabilizers for super easy access. Once you do that, then make sure you have the materials that you need. I have used cuticle cutters, I have used nail cutters, I have used flesh cutters to clip off the part of the stabilizer that touches the PCB. And then as for lube, you can use dielectric grease such as Permatex or any other dielectric grease that you find at the hardware store. And many recommend using Crytox 205 G0 if you have access to that. If you are interested in buying those higher end lubes, I do recommend buying from Switch Mod. They have great service and I'm really happy with them. And you can also put some electrical tape or band-aid between the stabilizer and the plate where it enters to ensure a tighter fit. 
So one more, number five will be the hardest and probably most time consuming and tedious one. And you've probably heard this all before and that is lubing your switches. To do this, you either need to desolder the switches from your keyboard or you have a hot swappable keyboard and your switches are easy to take out. So either one works. As for materials, you're going to need a small paintbrush, lube of your choice, a place to hold your lube, of course. You can optionally have a lubing station or not. I do not, I just use a table to do it. However, if you do have a lubing station, that would probably speed up the process quite a bit. You need a switch opener or a flathead screwdriver, depending on what kind of switches you have. Cherry switches open differently than kale style switches, so it's sort of a pain. Kale switches are really hard to open, so are Odomu switches. Cherry switches are pretty easy to open even without a switch opener. For an in-depth guide on how to lube your switches, I'll link down below to a guide that we wrote recently on our blog. It comes with pictures and everything. If you're looking for a video, I'll link to a video that I really like as well down below and you can watch that if you like, use them side by side. Either way, make sure you really know what you're doing before you lube something. Also, before lubing an entire keyboard, just lube one switch. Make sure you like how it sounds or feels before you go on to all of the other switches. When it comes to lubing, remember less is more. Don't over lube your switches because that just makes it even more mushy and more friction than it would have been in stock form. As for a accessible lube that I just ordered from Amazon, I do have a side-by-side -side comparison with sounds of lubed versus unlubed switches where I lubed with Super Lube 51004 and that seemed to work pretty well if you don't have access to the nice stuff. In the future, we will be testing out spray lube and giving you guys a genuine review on what our opinion are, what our opinion is with that and whether you should or not. But yeah, that's it for the mods from easiest to hardest that will make your mechanical keyboard sound better. Of course, you can also enter the whole custom scene and play with the materials of your plate, your case, and things like that. So going into like brass, aluminum, acrylic, polycarb, all those things make a difference when it comes to your keyboard sounds. And of course, you can play around with switch types. There are so many switch types. There are silent switches. There's like different varieties of tactile switches, linears, clickies, and you can also spring swap for a different feel. That was probably a lot of information. So I'm gonna end it here. I hope this video was super helpful. In the future, we will be doing individual guides on each of these things, but you're gonna have to wait a while because we're doing a big move soon and don't know when we'll have the available supplies and space to do something like that. Whew, that was a lot of information. All right, take time and decide on what mods you wanna to do to your mechanical keyboard and comment down below if you have done some of these already. And tell me your opinion on all these mods. If you have any other great information and advice to share about how to make your mechanical keyboard sound better, feel free to comment down below. Glad to hear it. I'm gonna link you guys to some tips and tricks on mechanical keyboards here. And I'll link you to another video that the YouTube algorithm thinks that you guys might really like from us here. Subscribe here if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one.